So I mentioned in my last talk that I think that what's taking place between the years 1776 uh, and 1787, 88, 89, is what you would call a second American revolution. And it's a revolution that gives to us a constitution. And it's a revolution that I think requires a, a little bit of a different conception of human nature and what human beings are, are capable of, uh, a more kind of cautious or, or reticent view of human nature that recognizes our weaknesses, recognizes um, that passion always, or, or sometimes I should say, directs us, but always must be considered as part of the overall human equation. So um, where do we see um, the experiment begin and how do we see it begin? And how at the heart of the battle over the Constitution uh, do we see kind of varying notions of human nature at play? That really is, is the subject of uh, McClay's chapter, The Experiment Begins. And he starts by saying the following. You had on the one side individuals who are very much in favor of a new constitution and had their reasons uh, for being in favor of that constitution. They, of course, would become known as the Federalists. And then you had another set, uh, usually older American leaders, who were very skeptical of the coming together and the drafting of this constitution and, and what it would mean for the country. So why this, um, why this challenge between Federalists on the one hand and Anti-Federalists on the other? Well, I think the key to answering this question comes in something that we've discussed already. Americans were very used to, over the course of the 17th and 18th centuries, ruling over themselves. They were very used to their own individual liberty. Uh, most life lived in the 17th and 18th century was lived at the local level. So if you had authority over what you were doing, you had authority over uh, theology within uh, your particular part of the country, you had authority over the economy, trade, etc., taxes, you didn't want to give up that authority. So why would these Federalists come along and say, we need a new constitution? What they're going to do is they're going to uh, produce a constitution that consolidates power, uh, and that grants kind of some central authority, the same type of absolute power of the King of England that we we're trying to get away from. So the Anti-Federalists see in the federal constitution kind of the movement towards what? Towards consolidation and centralization, a consolidation and centralization that would cut away at our liberty. So what about the Federalist argument? Why, does, what, what, why do the Federalists argue what they do? Well, they see in fighting the war just how difficult it is to operate as an independent country if power is distributed everywhere and authority is distributed everywhere and no one is actually accountable for anything that happens right at a collective level. We need, uh, argue the Federalists, a federal government that kind of holds together the American experiment in self-government uh, right at, at an upper level. And by doing so and, and, and putting down some notions of how we can operate federally uh, will be good for liberty, both local and at the national level. So they argue that this kind of in-between model, in-between what you find in the old world and, and, and in the first constitution of the United States called the Articles of Confederation, you can have some sort of greater consolidation of what we're doing that benefits the liberties of Americans. Now, key... Uh, to their whole argument. Uh, key to their argument, and going back to this idea of uh, the one, the few, and the many, is for the Federalists, they could point to a George Washington and they could say, if we have a president, that president will not act like a king. If we have a Washington who very much cares about the common good and is not after power uh, just because he wants to rule over people, but, but is very much a kind of Republican statesman who just wants to do what is good for others, we have there a person who can make this thing work. And we can find a way in the crafting of federal institutions and in the relationship between the federal and the state government, a way for the many to be represented by the few, uh, their representatives, uh, in a way in which uh, the power is not abused uh, by this central uh, government. So a very, very interesting dynamic at play in the arguing for a new constitution, and then the rolling out of, of that, um, that type of government in the 1790s. How, what does it look like? And are the arguments that the anti-federalists make, uh, do they hold true once we see Washington as a president? Uh, that's where we're going next in our story.